Hello, my name's Ian Hofmeister. I've been set a challenge to make a Twix. So today, exactly what I'm gonna do. So I've got some melted butter, which I've got to put into here. And then I've got to add some sugar to make the shortbread biscuit. So obviously, as you all know, there's three layers in a Twix, which I'll show you in a second. I'll get this mixing. Have you ever made a Twix before? No. I don't, I don't actually know why I'm making a Twix. It's cost me six pounds in caramels. But anyway, I love a challenge, so I'm going to attempt this Twix. Now, let me show you the Twix. It's got the nice sticky caramely bit, the biscuit base, and then it's enrobed in chocolate. And if I can get it to look like that or something similar, I'm a winner. <laughs> Why did you pick a Twix Extra? Size matters, so I <laughs> um, Everyone likes a biscuit, a chocolate biscuit, uh, and you get more in this packet. I'm going to try and recreate the, this actual Twix. The bigger the size. better, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but actually, the real reason I bought these ones is that I saw the supermarket now, yeah, so that's the right <laughs> How confident are you in it turning out like one on the plate over there? Um, I think I'm going to know in about half an hour. And I can't say I'm actually that confident. I'm confident in the chocolate, I'm confident in the biscuit, but the caramel bit is the bit where I could become stuck. It's going to be very sticky. Is uh, there any up in here? Where did you find the drive to uh, start your interest in venture in baking and chocolate? Well, I think my, my main motivation was my late mother. So I got into baking to start with about four or five years ago. Um, I just want to make my mum proud, really. Uh, I know she'd be looking down on me willing me to make this Twix. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, just willing me to do well, if I'm being honest. So, uh, let's see how it goes. It's going to be good. And you're assuming we're your timer for that mixer because you Yeah, this has got a mix of three minutes to, to melt the uh, sugar into the butter. Uh, you don't want it grainy, it's got to be nice and smooth. Um, I don't know if it's been three minutes yet. Not yet, yeah, but you seem to have a lot of caramel over there. Okay. Yeah, have you seen this? Look, look, look at the amount of caramel. I've got to set the challenge. It's quite a simple recipe. Instead of making your own caramel, I've just got to use soft caramels. But the, sh the, the shop I went to to purchase these uh, didn't have any soft caramels. They had these uh, Scot Scottish toffees. So I'm just hoping that uh, when, we, when we get to making it, that's the bit I'm not confident about. I'm hoping that uh, we'll be able to cut into it or even it's edible, I'm, I'm hoping anyway. Are you worried that it might be too caramelly? Because there's a lot, of, a lot of them in that bowl over there. Yeah, there's 600 grams of delicious toffee. <laughs> uh, it's going to get very messy. Um, no, I'm confident, yeah. It's going to be, hopefully, I mean, I'm going to make a tweak the size of this pan. Um, obviously, I'm going to cut it. Size matters. <laughs> size matters again. Yeah. This is sleek. Okay, so I've got to add the flour, and then I've got a bit of sugar. I'll add those in. And now, this is a little tip for anybody out there. Uh, you just mix this till it's just combined. You don't, you don't ever want to mix the flour too long. In biscuit or cake mixes, it will make it very chewy. Um, so I'm just going to combine this, it won't take very long at all. And it's not like making bread, you know, bread is 7 to 10 minutes of heavy work. So let's see. There we go, it's already done. This is good. So now, it did say in the recipe I had to use my hands. So this, this could be messy too. Have you got any other questions? 
It looks a bit dry. A bit dry, no, no. It's a shortbread mix. I did say use my fingers, so I'm going to use my fingers. Right, so squash this out. And obviously, it's got to be quite thin because uh, it will rise a little bit. It's made with self raising flour. Make a nice, light shortbread biscuit. Have you ever made shortbread before? Yeah, I have, yeah. It's a really nice, simple biscuit, but it, it, it goes really well with other toppings. Um, even though, you know, shortbread biscuit with a bit of sugar on, it's not bad, is it? Yeah. I thought this would be the easy bit. We're nearly there. Show you what I'm doing. Are you guys willing to try this? Yeah, very. Oh, that's good. <laughs> You're all brave. <laughs> so let's go. Right, I'm going to do one other bit. I'm just going to fork it. Because it's made with self raising flour, it's obviously going to rise. But I don't want it to rise too much. Um, otherwise, my Twix is going to be all biscuit and no caramel and a tiny little bit of chocolate. And when we bake this, it's going to go golden brown. It mustn't be overbaked, it gets very crumbly. Which will be a nightmare when it comes to uh, cutting it into the fingers. Is it fingers? Stick? Fingers? <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, there we go. So this is going to go in the oven about 18 minutes, and then we're going to make the caramel. Okay, so uh, I've got my shortbread biscuit from the oven. Here, we, here it is. Um, it's just a pale golden colour. Hopefully, um, I've not overcooked it. Otherwise, this is going to go very crumbly when I go to cut it. Anyway, in here, um, and I did say in the recipe to use a microwave to melt the caramels. Uh, the 600 grams of caramels. Anyway, uh, I decided to do it in a bain marie, it's just a bit more controlled. Um, you get better uh, texture, I think. Um, anyway, uh, it's really smooth and golden. Now I'm steamed up, can't see. So uh, I don't know if you can see that. So I've got to pour this onto the shortbread biscuit, clearly, because this is the best part of the twigs. Now this uh, this is caramel with um, some double cream in it. Um, it has a couple of tablespoons of double cream to make it the right consistency. And I'm hoping when it's set, it will still have a chew and it won't set too hard because that would be a disaster, as they say on other shows. What's your favourite chocolate bar? Uh, my favourite one is um, a Milka bar, uh, it's a Swiss chocolate, um, I actually have one over there but I can't, I can't reach it. Um, I got, when I grew up, uh, sorry, when I was growing up, I should say, um, my relatives would post a hamper at Christmas and in it would be a, a Milka chocolate bar, it was one of my favourite things. Um, the Swiss chocolate, I still believe, is one of the best. I've just got a feeling this is Twix is going to have extra caramel in it. This is quite thick, as in. Anyway. If you could rename a Twix, what would you rename it? That's a good question. Um, what about twins? It has short red layer, and it has a look at this caramel. Uh, a caramel layer. Now, I'm not going to work the caramel anymore because as it cools down, you lose the smoothness. So now, it's nice and smooth. Um, there's a few air bubbles in it, but nothing I can do about that. And then um, I'm gonna put that in the fridge for about an hour to cool down. And then we'll be ready to cut it into fingers and, uh, and do the exciting bit, which is 
dipping in chocolate. I can't wait. It's going to be great. And we're actually going to use dairy milk today with a, um, a blend, but we'll come on to that in the next part. So I'll see you in the third part. Okay, so welcome back to the third episode <laughs> of my Twix making challenge. So we've now uh, pulled this out of the fridge, look, uh, and it's pretty solid. I'll pop this on here. So now I've got the short bread, uh, short bread biscuit base with a caramel. If you can see that. Um, that's two of the layers, so we've now got to cut it into the fingers, dip it in some chocolate, and hopefully, hopefully it's going to be okay. So I've not ever practiced this, I've not made this before. Cutting it oh. is a little bit scary. Okay. Mm. Hopefully we're going to have some teeth left or anything. anything is. So I'm just going to do some. That's not too bad, it's a little bit thicker than a normal Twix. But it's gonna be where that's a Twix Extra. This is a Twix Extra Extra Large. <laughs> anyway, so who doesn't like an Extra Extra Large Twix? It looks like Millionaire Shortbread. It does actually. Maybe that's where they got the inspiration from. Okay, oh God. What weaknesses do you think you have with working with chocolate? Oh, some of the biscuits crumbled, look. Yeah. It did warn about that. What was that? Some of the weaknesses with working, working with chocolate. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's actually easy to answer for me because white chocolate is definitely um, my nemesis. If you, um, if you uh, overheat it, it's quite horrific. And then it goes grainy, and then you can't save it. Um, you might want to colour it or add some flavourings. So what I'm going to do is turn it upside down and cut it from the other, from the reverse. Otherwise, there's going to be no biscuit on there. So let's try this. Tell I'm an amateur Twix maker. All right. It's sort of working. I think it's working a lot better than it did just now, where basically I was crushing the biscuit. And just for the sake of the video, I'm not going to make every single Twix because <laughs> we could be here all evening. So you'd like that. Now what I have done is uh, in the Bain Marie, not my wife, <laughs> in the Bain, Bain Marie I have a mix of milk and chocolate, dairy milk and chocolate, um, because looking at the colour of this Twix, it's definitely milk and chocolate. Um, I thought it'd be nice to have a blend, but also it's because that's all, the, all I had in my cupboard, I didn't have enough milka chocolate so anyway so we've got a, a mix um and if you want to do a, a close-up of the chocolate but it's okay. anyway here it is look at that lovely right so um let's try doing some dipping so i'm gonna just put this to one side So let's do this. Right, now this is the messy bit. Now I did say earlier in the video, oh dear, <laughs> but, uh, not rehearsed. Uh, I, the, the bit I was worried about was the caramel. And how wrong was I? What I should be worried about is this section. But anyway, this is gonna be the real messy bit. Okay, so here, wish me luck. So I'm gonna dip this in. 
I'm going to roll it. And then I'm going to fish it out. Fish it out. That's probably... And now the bit I can't recreate is the, um, the ridges on it. To get the ridges, uh, I would have needed to pour it. And uh, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to do that. Hopefully they taste better than they look. But anyway, for a first attempt, I don't think it's too bad. Do you have any other questions? Um, how do you get the rounded shape on the actual Twix? And why can't you do it with these? Uh, that's a good question. I, I actually think that um, the, the caramel is poured on in ribbons. This is what I'm guessing. And then the, the cutter cuts between the ribbons of caramel into the biscuit. So you don't have that crushing of the biscuit. This is what I think anyway. Um, which then, because it's a ribbon of caramel, it's got that rounded shape. And then because it goes through a curtain of chocolate, like a waterfall of chocolate, and that's what gives it, and then it's passing underneath it, that's what gives it the ridges. I was going to attempt that, but I think I'm making enough mess as it is. Right, we'll do the last one here. For the sake of the video, I'm just going to make this my last one, and then off camera, I'm going to finish them off. A bit blue pizza style. <laughs> yeah. So these, these will need to go in the fridge for 10 minutes just to refrigerate. Um, told you that was going to be messy. Um, and then we'll come back and we'll cut one open and do a taste test, see what it looks like. Okay, I'm just going to experiment. I've tried it on this one here and it seems to have worked. To get the ridges, I'm just going to do this with a fork. Give you that authentic Twix look. As if it's passed through a curtain of chocolate. to the fourth and final part of my video making a Twix, my attempt. Um, this is the final reveal. Ta-da! So you want to see inside it. So this is what the original one looks like. Let me see how close I can get to this. Oh, it's chewy. There we go. There we go. So this is the original. So maybe my caramel is just a little bit firmer. Uh, then the original, but I've got a biscuit base there, and uh, obviously the Milka Cadbury combination chocolate coating. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching me, and uh, I've really enjoyed the challenge. Thanks very much.